Hey folks, this is IOE and we're back with some more <laughs> World of Tanks. So as you can see, as you can see, sorry, this is Rick, Rick, Rem, Rick Rem, yeah. I'm never going <laughs> to get this name right. I really, really want to say Rick Rem or uh, Rick Rem. I don't, no, no, I don't know. I don't know what my brain was trying to say, but it wasn't this. Anyways, in either case, uh, this is a tier 9 game on Fisherman's Bay, uh, and he is in the Pajetto 46, a beautiful tank if you haven't got yours yet. Uh, I suggest you do. It's a great tank if you enjoy autoloaders or fast or uh, decent medium tanks, then this is a good tank for you. Uh, but before we get into the game, as always, if you uh, think that... Um, this deserves the MVP for the week, then please do hit that like button. If you think that you want uh, more content like this, then please subscribe and hit the little notifications bell so you actually get all my content. And in all things, thank the Patreons who are amazing. If you decide you want to be a Patreon, then there's a link in the description below, and as little as a dollar really does help out quite a bit. This next, uh, in the next little bit, I'm actually going to be donating a bunch of my Patreon money to help um, the C server get their um, uh, P2F from player to player thing going because it's just a mess of <laughs> it's, it's a donation it's, 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 it's fine if you want to kick into that it would be appreciated if you don't don't worry about it either way I will be kicking in most of my uh, my Patreon money for the month that's not coming in through, the, or that's not going into the MVP fund, so that's just how that's going. Um, and I forget what I was going to say, so we're just going to get back into the game. And, uh, so he's, he's currently got the side view of all these tanks. And as much as you really do want to wait for the reload on this, because you have the best rate of fire when you, you're uh, firing shot and then shot and then shot versus when you just unleash the entire autoloader clip, right? Um, and so as much as you want to fire this as a single uh, single shell gun um, for the majority of the game in a situation like that we have the size of so many enemy tanks it's probably worth it just to unload your entire clip or fire shell, fire shell, and then unload your entire clip kind of thing. Um, something like that to try and maximize the amount of burst damage you can get out of the very start of a game where you're only going to have that opportunity for a very short amount of time. And then after that, of course, you're going to move around, you're going to reload anyway. You might as well uh, take the time to fully reload your weapon and, uh, and then go from there. So that's pretty much what he did. Uh, he did track the T-28 multiple times. I don't know if he meant to or if he was trying to actually do damage to the T-28 and the shots didn't go where he was hoping. In either case, um, he did, you know, clip out and then came over here and is now looking for shots on the pen or preferably I think he'd rather shoot the Scorpion G because of course Scorpion G is a nice soft target. And you're definitely going to go through those shots. Ooh, does he have a shot on the Somoa? He does. He does bounce the first one off its armor, though. I didn't really realize it had armor, unfortunately. So as much as he fired an entire clip there, which is definitely the thing you should be doing if you can take an enemy tank, it's worth going through your entire mag. Unfortunately for him, he didn't take it out with his last shells. And not taking it with that shell either makes this extremely slow. So his DPM is really suffering right now. Now, for until just now, he hasn't been using his DPM, so it didn't really matter that it's been suffering. But at this point in time, he really does want to go through the entire reload, get all of his ammo back, and then go ahead and start attacking again. Because if he just sits there with only one shell being constantly reloaded in, and you know, not having any other shells in the auto order, it's going to take so long that you're going to fall asleep because you're going to be bored. It's just, it's horrible reload once that last shell being reloaded over and 
over and over again. You really got to make sure it's the first shell you're loading over and over again because that shell will load fairly quickly. Um, ooh, it was well done with the T-34. I think it, uh, he is platooned up with Off-Duty Ninja, so I feel like the two of them were in voice comms and they both decided to focus fire on the T-34. If they hadn't, though, I would have suggested something more like, you know, use it as a single fire gun for a little bit and then finish off the, the rest with the, the rest of the mag. Um, but... I assume he was in communications with off duty ninja and so the two of them decided to just unleash their entire mags right instead of doing single fire over and over again but uh it, it worked out really well for them so now he's pushing up he's trying to obviously get eyes on more of the enemy tanks that are dug in in the corner the 263 is i don't think he's going to get eyes on the 263 unless of course it pulls forward and he unfortunately missed the shot, so he is, in fact, it looks like going to take the time to reload the shell again. Oh, the 131 doesn't realize it's lit, so he actually fires two shells into it, and then off to Ninja finishes it off. Unfortunately, though, in the meantime, he got himself tracked. Well done on that shell. Um, yeah, I think that was worth it. It is going to mean that he fired his entire clip, so he's going to spend a lot of time reloading right now. But other than that, it was worth firing. Uh, I, I'm sure I would have shot it, uh, fired that last shell, uh, given the opportunity. But with this tank is so hard in the heat of battle to remember. Yes, it's an auto loader, but no, I don't necessarily want to fire every every shot. So with this tank, you're actually going to end up thinking. A lot more than you normally would. You end up going through, should this be an autoloader clip? Or do I just need, is it more effective for me to fire one shell and then one shell and then one shell kind of thing, right? Um, Ninja got himself hit pretty hard by something. I think it was probably artillery. Uh, or, yeah, artillery is the only thing I can think of. That's still in this game that could have hit off to ninja for that much damage because nothing else is in position to actually shoot him the male and the, and the j panther are in front of us somewhere um down in this in this section here somewhere and the rest of the tank destroyers are over here and so neither of those uh side of those forces has a shot on where off duty was right about right here. So artillery is probably back here somewhere and had the shot and took it. Uh, the J Panther runs into our guns at home and gets himself taken out. And if he was spotting for the Emil, nope, the Emil's right there. And Rick Rimmer has realized it just about the same time I did. He spins around, though. He gets shot in the back by the Scorpion G. He's going to have to get out of this line of fire, otherwise he's going to take another shell. Um, the Scorpion G was last seen a long way away, but that doesn't mean he hasn't pushed forward in the meantime, and that doesn't mean he can't blind shot. And I don't know if we got hit by a blind shot, or if um, he, the Scorpion G is a lot closer than we thought he was. And unfortunately, with both of these guys down to single shots, um... It is really a bad spot. The Emil 2 is obviously an autoloader. And so the only thing limiting him from taking out both of these guys was the fact that they were literally on opposite sides of him and that his turret swings around very slowly. If he'd been spinning the entire tank, that might have progressed differently. Or if he was um if he just fired his last shell. At off to Ninja, again, that may have progressed differently, but I don't know. Uh, Merc, um, sorry. Uh, Rickram seems to believe that there is the artillery over here somewhere. And so, yep, that's where the artillery is. We do not get shotgun, thank lord, because if that had connected, that would have been game over. That would have been done. But nope, artillery was, um, 
not prepared for us to rush him. I can't believe he was over on this side of the map all by himself. This is some really horrible play. Um, now, I mean, obviously, if you're in any other tank, you wouldn't be on a flank all by yourself. I assume all my uh, <laughs> viewers are smart enough not to sit on a flank all by yourself, right? Good. Don't make me tell you again. Because, <laughs> um, of course, if you're sitting on the flank all by yourself, then you're much more vulnerable. And it doesn't matter if you're an artillery or not. Don't sit on the flank by yourself. Um, so, what is Rickram's next goal going to be? Well, I think he's got to push in towards... Uh, the A line here. At the top of the A line, there is a bush right about here. Um, so he asked the artillery if he's ready, and I assume he is also asking the WT. And then it looks like he's going to make a spotting run. Now, I wish uh, the artillery had pushed up a little bit uh, to somewhere like here or here where they'd be in much better positions to drop shots over here because they it would obviously be a shorter time to target. Ooh, but the 263 has surprised everybody and actually pushed around and flanked our artillery. That is the M12 dead, at least. The S51, it's hard to tell, but he might be in the trees. If he's in the trees and, and he does not fire, he will have the opportunity to live through this game. Challenger, ooh, unfortunately, it's, Shox gets blocked by something, but he does still take the Challenger out with the other snapshot. Um, now he's going to reload both shells before he jumps on the Scorpion G because, of course, if he doesn't roll high, he's going to need three shells to take this thing out. Oh, no, I thought... I read its health wrong. I, I read 550 health. It obviously had 900 health. Uh, oof. Engine get down behind the hill, but he did track it. And one last shell into it just to icing on the cake. Nope, he's not going to get the shell. The Waffen Trigger is going to have to be the one thing that takes it out. In the meantime, it looks like um, the 263 has actually taken out our artillery. So the S51 either fired and got spotted, or this, the object 263 just got close enough to actually light the target. Now, we're going to speed this up a little bit because we all know where he is and why not uh, mer or, uh, rack uh, I can pronounce letters, I swear. Rick Ram Rick Ram is going to go the long way because he does not want to be lit uh, on the, his inbound approach. That 263 can rip you apart and a single shell will take Rick Ram out of this game. So he really does need to be careful. Um, the Waffentrager is trying to do something, but at so, so far he hasn't actually wounded the 263 at all. Now the fact is we can see that the 263 is flank. One, two, three shells into him, and now he's going to back on off. 263 knows approximately where we are. Um, but... Now that we have done that, we now, as much as the 263 knows where we are, he's not, he doesn't, I don't think he has the V-range. Uh, you're right, it's a, it's a fairly short V-range tank, unless, uh, obviously, Binox going on. It is, however, a fast tank, so I don't know if Rickroom can actually outdistance this thing. I think he's going to have to outthink him, which is what he just did, so... The 263 saw him moving up along here. While it was moving along here, it's coming on parallel parallel track. Trying to snag us about here. But um, as soon as Rickram was not lit anymore, he hit the brakes, pulled back, spun around, and came over in this direction. And now he's hiding and waiting in ambush. One, two good shells into him. He had enough left for a one more third and final shell, assuming he missed or bounced or low rolled, and this was an excellent ambush. 
well done. 263 obviously knew he was faster, and he just he decided he could just rush along, along the same path that Rick Rome took. And it almost worked for him, except obviously it didn't, because Rick Rome just outthought him and ambushed him beautifully. Well done, sir. Well done to everybody. Um, that, that was good. That was good. I love this thing. Anyways, uh, we're going to jump over to the his battle results. And I uh, just want to point out the fact that they have 10 kills between them. Two more kills. Or if they had invited uh, somebody else into their platoon, this would have been a crucial contribution. So close, right? Also, if Often Ninja had survived, then this would have been a brothers in arms. Sad face. Okay, let's go and see what his battle results were. Mastery class, or Mastery Badge, Ace Tanker. Wow. Hand of God, Bruiser, Fire for Effect, a Pascucci's Medal, which is awesome, but not really all that rare. A Lavashinos, Lavashinos Medal, though, is quite rare. This is for killing two tanks that are at least one tier higher than you. Defender, High Caliber, and Top Gun. So the two tier, are two tanks that were one tier higher than him, Obviously, were the um, the two six three, and it's the mil two that's tier uh, tier nine, right? Or is it the challenger? I don't know. Doesn't matter. One of those two tanks was a tier higher than him, and he just made it look silly. Well done. Over five thousand damage dealt. Six kills and 1,600 base experience in this thing. So now everybody knows what it takes to ace this thing. Let's see everybody's ace tanker games in this thing, right? <laughs> 34 shots fired, 23 connections, and nice job. Also, some spying damage in there. Now, I'm pretty sure most of this was from breaking enemies' tracks and then having them shot to death versus... Uh, actually spotting damage and uh, for almost 9,000 experience this was a worth it uh, also look at the amount of actual credits he earned um, wow this was a great game thank you so much Rickram for saying it in thank you everybody for watching please do hit the like or the like button if you want this to be the MVP for the week uh, please subscribe if you want to see more of this and all things thank the Patreons again if you decide you want to be a Patreon uh, for as little as a dollar a month that would really really help out um, and so there's a link in the description below there's also a link on the YouTube oh, my YouTube homepage and thank you to all my Patreons without you I couldn't do a lot of this so we'll see you all next time this IOE throughout. out